What's up everybody? Keith Dykes here with WKD Construction and welcome to my channel. Oh, so uh, check it out. Today we are getting started on the standing seam metal roof for here at the Melton Farm project. So standing seam metal is definitely an upgrade from just your standard D-rib metal. It is a hidden fastener type of system where no screws are exposed at all on the entire roof. When I say upgrade, I'm, it is an upgrade. For one, it's a classier looking roof to me. It looks better. Uh, and then two, you don't have any worry about potential leaks down the road by using on a conventional D-rib metal, you have a screw with a neoprene washer. So down the road, eight to 10 years, they do tend to dry out and uh, they are a potential leak every time you screw down through the metal. So with the standing seam metal, you upgrade, you don't have any, any screws whatsoever to worry about to potentially leak down the road. Because a lot of times the screws on a conventional D-rib metal roof, they, they tend to move in and out for whatever reason, I guess just freezing and summer, summer heat, they, uh, the screws will move in and out just a little bit because I've had to go back and replace where and try to find a leak, you know, 10 years later and you can find rust inside on the on the uh, shaft of the screw. You take it out and the dang screw will be will be rusted. So they they do move and and uh, it just it's just a potential potential leak down the road that we're that we're trying to eliminate. As you see behind me, you can see the beautiful diamond coat fascia and soffit that we had to install previously before we could start the standing seam metal roof. Uh, if you have not seen that video, I'll put a link right here and you can check that out. Here is some of our metal. It's all crated up. Individual pieces, 16 inches wide. And a lot of our trim, we still have some more metal to be delivered, but this is... This is probably three quarters of it, maybe. So we're starting here on the fascia. We've got two-piece system. We've got our small eave starter and then a, a uh, offset cleat. So we got this nailed down with the roof nail. This has got butyl tape underneath it and then screwed down. And then our metal will come set and then I will bend it and it will bend and lock onto here. And then, like I said, it's it will be no screws exposed. We'll have a flange that you screw down to, a screw flange. And then we will screw down the, the metal each piece. And then we'll come back and zip tape this bottom run just to seal it off. That way water, if water did get in there, it's gonna flow over the top. All right, so here is a piece of the standing seam metal. You can see the profile. This is your lock inside right here. And then it locks into right here on this little tit. Of course, you fasten this uh, side right here down to, the, down to the roof decking. And then you just keep clipping each side onto the other, other side as you go. Keep your keep your tape on your butyl, and then you can position your metal where it needs to go, and then pull the pull the uh, paper out. Because we tried it the first time and didn't work too good. All right, we're about to put this first piece on, but we need to find squareness to the roof. You can definitely go with that, but you don't know what's right really. By the time you get down there. If you're a quarter inch here, it's, it's going to be way bad down there. So we're going to check the squareness. We're going to pull a diagonal from where Steve's at down to the bottom and get it really accurate before we start screwing it down. Brent's going to measure 15 feet right to the very bottom edge. Steve's got 18 feet. 
and I'm gonna get on my Construction Master Pro and we'll figure out what it is. So my diagonal measurement is 23 feet 5 and 3 6 tenths. And you'll be right to the, you're nailing, right to the edge. At your 18 foot mark. You which side you're measuring to? Measure this side. What's your edge look like? One quarter inch shy? No, it's pretty much flush. Alright, that's fine. That's why we, that why we checking square. As you can see, it's got striations. That way it gives the panel more rigidity. And when the sun comes out, it won't wrinkle, it won't oil can as, as bad. You might, it may, may flex a little bit, but it's not going to be that noticeable with the striations in it. So we're going to hem a bottom of this piece. This is my little uh, folding tool. They leave this tab so when we put this piece over the other piece we fold it and it hides that that hole that's right there. And then Brent will take some pliers, some hand brakes, and once we put it over the uh, cleat, he'll crimp it down and make it nice and a little sharper, sharper uh, bend on it. So that locks it in and it won't be able to, uh, this side won't be able to raise up off the roof really in there locked in there. That's why I left that little tab on there. Just kind of covers that hole up. Nibblers for the win. Alright, we're starting on the front side. And we kind of did this one a little different. I took a chalk line. Measured 
measured up a foot measured up a foot down there chalked a line and then I used I measured from here to here 12 feet Steve's got a 16 foot mark I did my construction master pro and we're going to pull a diagonal measurement of 20 feet and that will keep us square to this end of the roof All the uh, full panels are installed and right there where the roof meets the wall we will have a uh, wall flashing detail, a side, side wall flashing that we will have to go from the roof, Z-bar, flash up the siding and then drip cap over the top of that and then a little kick out at the bottom. It is warm! Uh, we're here on the transition up off the back porch. And we're going from a 412 to an 812. I had to put some blocking down because the transition metal was so, it had such a gap. We really needed to put a solid backing in there. So later on, nobody come up and step on it. So we've got a solid, uh, we took a two by six, ripped it and uh, made it fit the angle of the 412 roof onto the 812. And now we're putting the Z, the Z bar, the Z flashing in between each panel and then our transition metal will lock over and hem on to the top of that and we'll pop rivet it. So to find our uh, blocking, I measured down off the ridge, made the same all the way across chalked line and then we sat or we fastened the uh, filler strip, the blocking to that line. And then to find where our string is, I'm using the string so we can go to our Z flash and it's a lot easier uh, than trying to chalk a line and do that, but that will be the bottom of our transition metal Be right there. So I just measured from here down strung all the way across checked it in the middle and then uh, got a little clamp a little uh, stair framing square clamp to hold our string in the middle So once we screwed down the uh, z-bar I took a little, of course it's got Bostic sealant, or not Bostic, but uh, butyl, butyl tape on the bottom of each piece. And then after we stuck it down, screwed it, and then I used some OSI. I like the OSI in black and uh, sealed up that joint. That way water is not going to blow and get up onto the top of that other metal. A little OSI in between the joints and a little zip tape at the top. We're just taking a piece and rip it in half because it's not going to be on there very long. I just just in case a pop-up thunderstorm comes up, water won't get in behind there, is all. So I 
and I went ahead and set the string an inch below what I had earlier. Then we strung all the way across and then just measured up from there to, to the transition metal because it was easier than trying to do it on top of it. That way you, that way you know if you're off of the, on the string or not. Because if it was right up against it, we wouldn't have been able to tell. So that way we can measure an inch and we know it's going to be, be right. So we up here working off the lift this morning because we got a huge had a big heavy dew. We don't want to be slipping off. But we just took the offset cleat for this transition, flushed it up to the top of the transition, put some butyl in behind it, screwed it down, and then this gives us our starting point for our metal. got your mallet use a little sacrificial piece of metal put a little zip tape on it so I don't scratch the metal because that hem on the bottom it, it will scratch the hell out of this transition metal or whatever you're doing because uh, it's it's been up an inch so it will scratch the metal so use your little little piece of sacrificial metal and then pry up your little edge right there and it help you get that hem underneath there And like on all the other roof pieces we started, I did pull a diagonal from the first piece down to the top of this. I pulled eight feet here, nine feet up, which give me a 10, a 12 foot half inch diagonal. All right, so we kind of run into a uh, predicament right here. Not a predicament, but a, just, a, just a little more serious transition. Had to run this one piece all the way up with a double hem. So we hemmed the bottom there and then I had to notch it and hem it at the transition. And then I did not, I was thinking that my metal, metal would have run long. So I don't have a full piece of metal that goes all the way to the ridge so we did have to piece it. Which most of that will be covered up with the corner and the ridge cap. So you're only going to see probably an inch and a half of that seam. So that's just just what we had to do but I notched my uh, transition which the corner will come over here and then I just let this metal run long underneath it that way if water did get in into there that point it's just gonna drip out and it'll come out the soffit and run down to the end of the roof and then since we had this bottom cleat set where it needed to be from that first piece when we put it on I measured over 10 feet up 12 feet and we did a diagonal to make sure we were running square on that first piece with the bottom of this roof and once you start laying all your pieces once you get about I don't know I usually get about 10 12 feet from the end go ahead and start measuring I'll measure from the fascia to your to your uh, seam on top and bottom and that way if you have to cheat it any you can that way you're not waiting till the last last two pieces we had to make up about i don't know five eighths of an inch by the time it was said and done so we cheated each piece about an eighth inch at the top and now we should be pretty damn right on the money beautiful now we've got a nice even cut we didn't have to cut it crooked everything will show up great on our corner or our rake trim so be beautiful uh, we're installing this rake and corner and we strung this side got it pop rivet you can see it straight but if you're on the face of it you can kind of see it dip so grab your string you hold it i hold it i'm gonna pull it
he he's got to raise it up right in the middle and then we'll pop rivet the face of it uh. and you can go ahead and pop rivet the face into the face of the it will hold and then if you need to adjust it for some reason you can too but that just gives it a little extra little extra oomph when we're uh, installing the ridge cap or any of the trims actually that's got a hem on it a lot of times they're really tight they're really tight right here you see how closed they are I'll just grab a painter's tool and open them up a little bit that way it uh it makes installation a ton a thousand times easier so now it's a lot easier when you take your z-bar or whatever you're using and uh, you know sneak it in there So we're up putting the ridge on here and instead of doing a string we just chalked a line since it wasn't that long we weren't going to have a big sag so we put the uh, ridge cap on marked both sides of it and then chalked a line and then we set our z bars to each chalk line and then like i said before we just come back and put a little osi to kind of seal up those gaps and then when you put your ridge cap on, it just locks into that hem. It, it ain't coming off and we'll stick a few pop rivets to hold it down. So we're going to have to bring the corner. We're going to have to bend the corner up the fascia. Or not the corner, sorry, the ridge. Bend the ridge up the fascia. We flashed it with some zip tape. And then after we get the fascia on, it will butt into the top of the ridge and notch around the ridge and set about half inch off of the roof and then this corner after we put the ridge on then the corner will sit on top and overlap the uh, ridge cap all right so here i took a piece of metal bent it just set it on top of the roof that way we wouldn't get any splash back onto the wood onto the uh, subfascia from when it hit here so I bent that and then I took the, the uh, ridge cap, bent it up so we can get some flashing, uh, shingle flashing there and then zip taped it that way. If water does get in there, it's just going to roll out and onto the roof. Oh, check it out y'all right here though. Zip system, peel and stick underlayment. This is the first time that I've used it. It just came out on the market this year. I think they uh, kind of released it at the IBS show. So we are getting, a, getting ready to use this for our valleys, uh, underneath our valley metal. And then we're gonna use it on the wall outside behind the stone as well. But I'm pretty excited to use it. All right, so we're about to install the uh, brand new peel and stick zip system valley flashing. And uh, yeah, first time I've used it, so I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna chalk a line all the way up through there so we keep it nice, nice and straight. I like I like to keep the uni uniformity, uh, but we're gonna chalk a line and then we'll just stick it down, try to get, get as many wrinkles out of it as possible because it is like a giant <laughs> roll of zip tape. And if you've ever if you've ever used zip tape, you know how damn sticky it is. So we're gonna we're gonna see how it works. Okay, y'all, this is something else right here. This is a three-man operation. 
we got we got some uh, pointers for the Huber uh, engineer. Well, that is uh, it, it's worse than it's by God sticky. It is it is something. I got it wrapped right here that way when water does, if water does ever get in behind that, then it's just gonna come over and go over the top and then the corner trim will cover that up anyway. I think we got it. I think we got a uh, massive All right, so once we got the uh, peel and stick flashing down, we got the valley flashing measured over 11 and a half from center of the valley all the way up, chalked a line, and we'll just go ahead and I'm just cutting it all flush that way. Once we put the metal on, it'll tuck over the top of that and we'll uh, figure out what to do with that later. But right now we're just going to the chalk line all the way to the transition. Let's use a couple of roof and nails just to tack it because we're going to be putting a bunch of screws in it anyway with the uh, offset cleat on there. <laughs> Get a selfie. Step off the back side of the porch. All right, so we've got our valleys chalked. Those are installed. And then we've been working on this very <laughs> difficult uh, joint is the very peak. I didn't show any of that because it took a while. It's just, you just kind of got to cut and fit and cut and fit and, and it takes takes a minute. So if we don't get that stuck on there. But there's our piece, it's all bent together, which then we got a little some OSI that way when we put it over should seal it up really nice and tight and then uh, we'll go back and uh, put a few pop rivets in it and hold hold some of the some of the uh, joints there Most of that will be, uh, we'll have ridge cap that will go up to here anyway, so really not going to see any of this. All that work for nothing. Well, you'll see this up here. I'll put one right there. Alright, now we've got to mount our offset cleat. I measured up six inches and that's going to give us a three inch valley reveal. So once we get it, there's the offset cleat. And then we will just screw it, put a little butyl tape and then screw it to there. And then we'll slide. We'll be able to hem our metal and slide it up onto here. Offset cleat is installed. Whoa! Turned you around. Offset cleat is installed. Screwed them every six inch, or eight or eight inches. And then we left a three inch gap in between the valley W and the cleat. Now we're gonna try to get a, make sure we're square with the ridge. I measured on the ridge plywood because I know we actually set the plywood <clears throat> according to 
to the uh, rafters. So uh, I'm going to measure down. I measure down over here 12 feet. Measure it on top 12 feet, and then we're going to do a diagonal measurement to make sure we are in line over here. and five eight. What? That is like no live purpose. <laughs> so now that we know that uh, gable is super square, we can just measure off of it. We'll just measure over the thickness. Uh, 17 and a half, I think, is the whole width. You want the whole piece because you got to find this angle. This angle has got to be correct. It can't be can't be off. So you want to measure the whole width of the piece to the nailer and everything, not just the uh, reveal. All right, so now, now we have an exact place to measure. That is 17 and a half inches from your uh, gable. And then there is our point. So we will just measure down on each side, measure down on each side and find our angle. It worked great. As we did on the back, we used a piece of metal to slide under there so we don't scratch and booger up the uh, valley. But it's basically from here to here is a uh, 10 and a half inch difference. So from now on, we can just basically measure down to here and then I'll subtract 10 and a half inches and it should keep us on angle. We'll have to do a check though. Check, check in the cool house. Beautiful. It is a little slower go today. Steve is not here, so. But these are kind of short pieces, so that helps. But it is it is a lot more particular. You do have to be, you gotta keep, obviously you gotta keep the angle uh, super on point, because if not, it, it'll get off really quick. So check yourself. I did make a pattern out of wood, and it has been working the past few. We had to adjust a few, few times to, to get it, but I think we are on track. So here's the pattern. Just gonna mark the angle, then add an inch. Don't forget to add the inch. Just gotta have the fold under. And that's that's where we'll cut it. There it is, tucked under. I cut this a little high, that way once we start tucking into the other piece, that's out of the way. And then of course that uh, gets cut and bend over. And then I also taper that that way, because if you leave it square, it's gonna be out underneath here. So cut that one off there and then angle that one too. Now there we have this side is complete and looks really good too. You just got to keep an eye on your valley sometimes. I mean, it, it, it will vary a little bit. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> just being human, you know, you got to work each piece. So just keep an eye on it and it will look great. Look at that. Fantastic. Nice and straight. Beautiful. We're going to get on the other side. So we've jumped on the other side, got a few pieces on. We'll get on it in the morning and finish it up. 
probably go ahead and just go ahead and completely finish it go ahead and put the uh ridge cap on and everything get this nice and in the dry that way we don't get water down in in behind here which we left for the weekend and we knew we was going to have a storm so i had the guys friday afternoon go ahead and tape tape that off that way water couldn't get down in there which i get a little bit maybe a little bit in them in those uh seams but overall it didn't get in behind everything and and uh, create moisture down there pretty slick and the easiest way to find your angle is when you have your uh, offset cleat just take a board which we happen to have some siding that's wide enough to fit in that whole panel and just slide it down there and mark it on top of your uh, cleat and it should be pretty damn tight I did the same thing with the dual pitch we have that valley that goes up the wall or up you know from 4 from 412 to 812 so I just took a board and made the double pitch mark it and cut it and then just marked it onto my piece and then bent it according and it worked like a champ here is the uh, outside corner the raking the gable gable trim so what I did was found the pitch of the rake which is 37 and a half degrees squared across and I did a little notch right here that way I can cut it here and then I'll just cut something generic kind of right here and then I'll bump, bend it together that way I don't have a seam on the top is what I'm trying to get at so now that I got the one correct angle all we'll do is bend it and it should line up the bottom when it's correct on the ridge where it goes right there I went ahead and bent it instead of just cutting it and then we're going to leave a little reveal between the bottom of the valley and uh, and the ridge itself I think it looks a little better but it's kind of cool oh, we're just about to get it whooped I left a little reveal right there make it look kind of cool That's it for today. We are hot. It's time to go. So <laughs> let's go to the house. You know what I'm saying? Looks beautiful. Now we got all of the bottom panels on. And now we are installing a just a nailer, a support for the uh, transition metal like we did on the back which just helps if somebody ever steps on it we got our z-bars in cocked and then we're going to put the transition metal on this is pretty uh i don't know i've never done a transition with a double valley double pitch valley so this is kind of uh i don't kind of a uh susceptible to water injury uh infiltration so Hopefully I zip taped it enough that if water does get in here and splash or ice build up It will get on here and then come and trickle over the top and out onto the roof instead of getting behind behind here Just keep a check on make sure our ribs are in line. We'll just take a string Kind of do a rough check. It ain't gonna be probably perfect, but Are you moving? You need to start. Are you gonna look like you want to start cheating them up? So you just got to keep an eye on it because it'll grow. These will grow on you. So you got to be careful. So what I mean by when they grow on you, I think, I think, <laughs> this is not a scientific fact, but I think since these have the, the uh, striations, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's got the, all the uh, lines in it. So by the time when we straighten it out and bend it, it makes that edge straight. So personally, I think by the time when I bend it, it stretches that end out probably a sixteenth, maybe a hair more. So so once you start trying to match something that hasn't been uh, hemmed, then then it's hard to it's hard to keep those lined up. So we've been kind of having to cheat them up. We've had to bow it up in the middle and then start our screw to try to hold it 
and uh, keep those those uh, splines in line, but it's it's been tough. <clears throat> All right, we're kind of at a difficult uh, transition. We're at the peak right here, and we've got to make two hems both <laughs> down each each uh, valley. So I'm gonna kind of maybe show you probably the best way that I know how to do it, maybe the easiest way. Uh, so let's let's get it. So just grab your scrap piece. You know, you know this point right here is where it's gotta be. Don't slide down. So you know that uh, this is going to be square, this is locked on here, so this gives you something to measure from on both ends, but we'll measure from the whole, the whole nailer side. and seven eight and then you can do the whole the whole length where you get where you need to be. What's that? Yeah, about a half over the wood. You look huh? About a half inch over the wood. I mean it looks I mean down you the other piece. No, don't go to the other piece, go yeah. what it needs to be. Uh, eighty two. We'll do eighty two. 82 length overall. This is going to be. Mark this corner down here if you ain't got enough. Alright, so we made our way down the valley to as far as we can. Since this is kind of a tricky, uh, <laughs> tricky situation where we got to keep all of the uh, seams lined up came as far as can with that so now I'm just gonna take some full pieces we're gonna start clipping them on and just kind of running them up there and put a few screws in them temporarily that way we can get to about right in here somewhere and then we can pull and use that as our layout because if we don't because I want to start I want to start here and work my way into this valley instead of starting on there because it'd be hard to keep it square so I want to start here and work my way that way so in turn we're gonna have to know exactly where our uh, seams are, so they'll so they'll line up half ass. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take some full sheets and just start putting them in there until I don't know, maybe about eight feet from the end. We might could be close enough there. All right, so all these are just temporarily on there. Now we've got a specific place that we can line up and hopefully keep the keep these in line because I think those were stretching a little bit like I said earlier yeah I had to start with a little rip piece that was kind of fun and uh, just making sure our lines our seams line up and they're they're doing pretty good so I'll just keep an eye on them and, and make sure they don't get too crazy which we don't have a whole lot more to get to that valley but there it is. Doing a little tape up there just to keep the water out of that because it's liable to shower tonight. So we're kind of taping off that uh, transition. And then Brent's working on the last piece. He's, he's having a little trouble. <laughs> it's being a pain in the ass. But we're about to get it and be gone for the day. Come back in the morning, transition. Get all them upper pieces on. Get it on time. So the other day I had some technical difficulties. I guess I've been recording for a couple days and I had super slow-mo on, so I may have to fast forward some of this crap 
and just kind of maybe do some text. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I had some pretty good stuff on there. Ah, it's all done. Oh, we got a little sidewall flashing to do. A couple of little small, tiny pieces, and of course our trim. But we'll get on that, cut our Z bars, and go. All right, so we like this little bit of soffit right here and a piece of metal. But right here, we need to create a little kick out flashing. That way, whatever water gets onto the roof will kind of kick out and get out in front of uh, the uh, piece of diamond coat trim here because you don't want it to run off in behind it because it will create a bunch of problems later on down the road you won't take a long time for you to notice it too so uh so we're going to try to come up with a way every every roof is a little little different a little bit <clears throat> a little different situation so so i'm trying to get a plan together and and get this worked out i got my piece of trim bent and i just put a little uh OSI in there. That way, when I put my my Z flashing on there, uh, it'll it'll have a little seal in, inside of it. zip tape on top of the Z flashing bend a little piece to kind of get that dead corner in there covered up and then we got a piece of metal and we're gonna I dehemmed it right here so I can sneak that piece of metal in and then we'll screw it screw it down up through there and then Z bar and sidewall flashing so on our kick out flashing what well, this is gonna be hidden with the uh, Z bar and the sidewall flashing anyway but if water ever did get in there it would get onto the roof panel, come down, and then drip out into the front of the trim. We're here just hanging out like a biscuit on the roof. And we're going to finish this uh, side wall flashing here on this little partial gable on the back porch here. Uh, so as we saw earlier, we took the metal. And then we just bent up the last piece of metal. And now we've got a piece of Z flashing, chalk the line. We're going to install the Z flashing and then the hemmed sidewall flashing will go on top of the Z, the Z bar. I get the side flaw. <laughs> side wall flashing on there just stuck it on there with a couple roof and nails but I just made the side wall flashing just plain out onto our uh, our uh, water cap there even though it runs past the roof I'm not really worried about it I'd rather have the water get on get on here and run and get out out of you know in front of the siding and into the gutter There we can go. Well, here's our sidewall flashing detail. I got my sidewall bent and uh, coming out at an angle. That way, once we put our trim in there, hopefully we get it over the top of it. But we'll figure it out as we put the siding on there. Well, there is the complete roof. I'll get up on the forklift later and we'll, we'll give you a little bird's eye view. 
So we be getting high on the job. <laughs> this is the only kind of high I be getting on the job, but uh, cause we up on Hello, Give you all a bird's eye view. There we go. Beautiful. Love the valleys. Love the hymn valleys, man. It's so much cleaner. Looks look just looks fantastic. Nice transition. But uh yeah, this is a 40-year metal. The basically the roof is lifetime. It's it's gonna last. The metal's gonna be there forever, basically. The paint, the paint is what uh the manufacturer usually keeps a warranty on. This is a 40-year no no fade uh paint. So uh yeah. I'll give you a little close-up detail of the valley. Okay, I got this corner. Try to close everything off that way. Bugs and stuff not gonna get up in there. Kept a three-inch reveal up in the valley. Of course, you got Z-bars under there. So, every, so water can't get up underneath your transitions. If I can get up here. Nice miner. One little scuff right there over the whole thing. <laughs> Brent scratched that, but as far as using your little piece of metal, it's the way to go. Ridge cap, of course, has the Z bar underneath it as well, so water can't get up under there. But yeah, everything is pop riveted, no screws, no screws anywhere. And your uh, gable trim course has z-bar underneath there with the hem everything's pop riveted on we got this corner underneath the transition into this corner so water flows from top to bottom all right y'all that's it that was my video on how we installed a standing seam metal roof here at the melton farm project if, if we're going to get technical about it, <laughs> I did a YouTube short and uh, Instagram reel and stuff on when we hemmed the bottom of the metal and I got so many complaints, or not complaints, but uh, comments about saying this is not a standing seam metal roof. It is. It's the same profile. It is a Prolock crimp-on type, or not a crimp, but a, a uh, tension, I guess, style standing seam metal roof. It is not a standard old time crimp uh, type standing seam metal roof, but if you look at the profile, it's flat and it has a one inch uh, seam. So in my opinion, that is, that is a standing seam metal roof, which coincides with that it's hidden fastener and there are no screws whatsoever. All your trim is pop riveted on, so everything, everything is concealed. So in my opinion, the Prolock standing seam metal roof is a standing seam metal roof. So if y'all would like some uh, Got It Coach swag, hit my store tab up on my YouTube channel and you can buy it direct and I will ship it to you. Once again, I'm Keith Dykes. This was the standing seam metal roof here at the Melton Farm Project. Thanks for watching and yes sir, got it coach.